I'd like to start with a prayer. I'm kidding. For those of you who are curious about the book and haven't read the book yet, I'm going to make a suggestion because I did this and it was super fun. And it took me longer to read the book than I normally did. But every time you had mentioned some kind of music that was happening in a scene, I would go back and I would listen to that music, right? So when you talked about, um, there's a, you paint a really beautiful picture of, of going four hours to the beach um, and Steve Miller's Living in the USA is playing and you had passed out and you were on the beach. I went back, I, got, I found that song. And first of all, I thought they said Stand Back until I just played it now and it was Stand Back. I had no idea in that song. So two for, for me, I learned to not sing the wrong lyrics. But um, going back and playing the music when you set the scenes is a really fun way to experience this book. So readers, when you get it, go read the thing, go back and listen. Um, was that intentional? Because it was so visual. Well, I got to say, if you if readers will do that, they're going to be doing what I was doing when I was writing. Um, the very first thing I did, uh, once I realized what my arc was going to be, I, and I knew when I set out to, to actually got down to the bare bones of writing, I knew that it was going to start in 1970. I knew it was going to end in 1990. I knew enough about writing to know that that was a good storytelling arc. I knew that me as the protagonist would go through a series of obstacles and come out a changed person. And that's what I wanted to do as a storyteller. But I thought, am I going to do it in a linear fashion? Yes, I am. Okay, so I'm going to start right here. So I just had this brilliant idea to go and make playlists of all the stuff I listened to. And I would, there's so much at our disposal with the internet. So I'd start with 1970. I'm like, okay, I'm um, 11 years old. And what am I, what, what were the hits? What was on AM radio? What else would have filtered down to me? Oh, well, I would have seen, you know, these, these movie things. Uh, what was on the jukebox at the coffee shop? And I created for each year and I would listen to these playlists and it never failed to bring me back. It, Cause I didn't want to write unless I had feelings. I didn't want to just write about this happened and then that happened and then I did this and then I did that. I really wanted feelings. I wanted, and until I could feel something and get connected to an experience and, and the music helped bring the feeling, bring me to the feeling. So if you do that, you'll be doing what I did as well. You have a great quote that I want to read and, and talk about when you said it. Um, and it's, it made me feel like so much when you said, um, on being a girl, you said, I had no idea how jarring it was for men in the audience to see cute girls breaking out of the boxes those men had apportioned for us. A prototype experience that I would see replayed over and over in my career as a musician. Um, I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about, about that statement. Again, my mom, I have to give her credit. You know, she, she didn't, she wasn't, she didn't fit into any box at all. She was absolutely beautiful. I write later in the book about her being uh, just beautiful, or earlier, uh, being beautiful and, and just gorgeous and smart, but she never tried. She wasn't trying to be attractive to people. She was just being herself, so she never fit in a box, even though she was gorgeous, and it's like, I just didn't think in terms of that. I didn't think in terms of, I never thought about getting married or I never dreamed about my wedding. I never, all I thought was like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? How am I gonna matter? How am I gonna feel like I, I'm valuable and that I matter? That was, that was my driving force and my, behind most of my ambition. How am I gonna get really far away from this shit that feels really painful? Uh, I want to be very far from that. How am I gonna do that? So it wasn't, and I think when I wrote that passage, it's like, I'm just starting my band, playing in that band, and it didn't even occur to me that the people, that the men in the audience had never seen that and what it must feel like, never even entered my mind. And when I say it, uh, it's a prototype experience, I still see it. I still see it. I still go with a kick-ass all-female rock and roll band. The and Blue go, Bonnet! Yes, and we will pull into a place in 2020 and 
We will have the people, the, the men working in the venue, kind of like, you know, just a little kind of like, mm, mm -hmm. you know, just like, you can, you can feel the smirking. And I love it. I love it because I'm just like, you know, like kind of looking at my watch. Okay, 10, 9, 8. Because I know what's going to happen. What's going to happen is they're going to come over. They're, they're going to be a hundred, a 360 degree shift. They're going to be nice. They're going to love the band. They're going to want to talk about guitars and gear. And it always happens. So it doesn't bother me. I just see it happen over and over. They, they think you're going to be lame. They think you're going to be probably as in the comic world, they think you're not going to be funny. Mm -hmm. you know? They think, totally. they think I'm not going to rock. They think I'm not going to, you know, know what I'm doing. They think I'm, I'm going to be shy or I'm going to be girly or, you know, they're not expecting a lot of times to see, but the, on the plus side, it's always a very positive reaction. It's never like, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. I like the positive reaction.